Welcome to Face to Facts. It's good to have you here all once again. We are getting ready for Bruins Game 3 of this run against the New York Islanders this evening. Um, I'm Nick Face. We have Tom Smith and we have the ghost of Phil Healy um, who will be joining us momentarily. Well, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to the Bruins. We have some a lot to talk about on the Celtics front because they shocked all of us yesterday with some news about Danny Ainge resigning and Brad Stevens taking over as president of basketball operations, which I'm definitely going to be talking about because I have a theory on that. We're going to talk about the Red Sox. Red Sox are struggling right now. They are playing right now. They got a 5-0 lead against the Astros, but it hasn't been a very good trip out to Houston this past week. Definitely some concerns on that front. So that's our show for today. I do want to talk and lead off this show, though, with the black and gold. I got my Bucky Bruins shirt on. Tom's got his Bruins hat on. And it's a 1-1 series tie. I, I do have to say, though, I don't feel worried. I don't feel like that loss that they had in overtime for game two is too much of a concern because to be honest with you, they lost from stupidity basically from Jeremy Lazon with that pass that he wanted to fire across on the blue line, which was what did Bruce Cassidy say at the end? It was a some sort of play. It was a, oh, what was the word he used? It was an irresponsible pass, basically. So he was pretty much putting that on, a little bit on, not a little bit, it was pretty much putting that on um, Lazon's part. And I completely agree with it. The well, Bruins were down 3-1, were they not? Was it 3-1? Yeah, they were down 3 1. They had a horrible second period. I'm not going to deny that. That was their worst period they have had in the playoffs. They looked terrible. Third period comes around, and we get Patrice Bergeron, and then uh, the game tying goal. Who was that? Marshawn. Was that uh, Marshan? Yeah, Marshan got the game tire. So, I mean, you, you got you got what you usually get from the Bruins. You got a comeback. They rise to the occasion in these sort of situations. We've seen it all year long. I just am not afraid of the Islanders. I'm not afraid. Go ahead, Tom. Um, so yeah, on the Lazon, uh, yeah, on the Lazon thing, he, you know, he knew he he screwed up. Um, you could see it in the replay when they panned over to him and he throwing a fit um i think the bruins thrive on falling behind i don't like to see it but i think that's i think that's where they thrive um and i mean this uh, that that loss really falls on the defense of the bruins i want i can't you can't even really say that ras didn't play you know ras played bad in that game he hasn't really played bad at all, really. They were kind of ticky-tack goals. They were more bad luck, bounces off, plays on, and stuff like that. And I'm not I'm not concerned on Tudor Rask. Yes, he's not 100%. He's got some nagging injuries, but he's playing through it. I think if this was anything serious, he wouldn't be playing. I do think that he's going to need some surgery or whatever it is in the offseason. I think it's the back that's bugging him a little bit, nagging a bit. But – I think he can play through this and, and do fine. So the people that want to criticize Rask for that loss need to go take a hike and go find something else to put their anger towards. But the defense I am concerned with a little bit, Tom. That third line pair of Clifton and Lazon, let's be honest here. You can't hide them. They're going to need their minutes. So they have to figure out either – Lazon gets his act together or Clifton gets I don't really think Clifton's been an issue but I, no. he's an experience he's an experienced a bit I don't think we've seen a very good playoff run from Carlo Carlo's afraid to get hit and that's kind of understandable with the whole concussion part but he looks slow he had some more so game one he was yeah. really off his game very weak on that front uh, McAvoy's been a stud we all know that 
I think I want to see Mike Riley elevate his game. I, I, yeah, but okay. I mean, you, you can, you can, criticize, he's, but he can be he's better. been showing up, but you know, he could do a little more. The player that I do think that they need back desperately, it's Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller's missed, but he's going to be out for game three and four. He did not make the trip to Long Island. And I hope he gets back into the action here because I, I would like to see Lazon exit stay bright. And I'm surprised they're rolling him back out here for game uh, for game three. I really am. I'm surprised. He's in the lineup tonight. Um, now, the Bruins are also without Craig Smith in game two, and that was a very significant loss. Yep, the reason that for hit. that is it slid Jacob DeBrus back up to the second line, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work. So Carson Coleman went in. He's going to come out again tonight. Smith will be back on the second line to anchor that piece. And that second line, I think with him there and Hall and Krejci, they're great. I want Krejci to put the puck in the net. And I have a, I have something in me that just feels like Krejci's going to do something tonight. Do something positive tonight. I just, yeah, I, I like the brusque on that third line. Uh, I, feel it. I think I think he does a lot, plays a lot better on that line. I mean, we, we've seen it. They've moved them up and down constantly between the second and third lines in the past. And yeah, sometimes he does well in the second line, but he, you know, he, he does a lot better when he plays on the third line with Coyle. The fourth line has also been very good. They just don't have the points. They don't have the assists. They don't have the goals that are there. So, but you don't really expect too much, too many goals really. from the, the fourth line. They're out there. It's, it's a, gravy you know, keep, if you the get puck, it. keep the puck in the offensive zone and get out it's gravy if you get it. So I hope they get some production there because then that kind of takes the pressure off of, of your so-called go-tos. I want to talk about the first line because we had the hat trick on the first game from pasta. Didn't really look that wonderful in the second game. He was off a little bit. If they can get that consistent David Posternick production, they're going places. So, well, I hope that they I hope that they rise to the occasion here tonight. Well, I will say I will say the Islanders are defending them a lot better than they were in the first game. Yes, they made the I adjustment. think I, I think they um, have low expectations, if you want to put it that way, um, for what they thought was gonna happen. Um, but I will say we're seeing them a lot more this playoffs than we were last playoffs. So um because i think from the last playoff that we had we had more production on crazy the first Everybody line was invisible was the was first invisible. line was invisible yep. um yeah i think i mean if the defense can step it up a little bit more I, I, there's there's a very good chance that uh they can make it you know push the I distance don't want to discount the islanders you know the bruins have played the islanders a lot this season. They did great with Taylor Hall. They were atrocious without Taylor Hall and the rest of the additions from that deadline. So I think that if they show up, they're ready to play. They are the better team. But you've got to bring your A game still. This well, is I think no me taking the foot off the gas. I think Taylor Hall plays better with Craig Smith too. I, I, I think it's. I think he. May, I think he's the difference maker on that line, really. Yep. I can completely agree on that front. Yep. And I think that that's what they need to see tonight. So tonight, that'll be game three. It's in Long Island. And we have Saturday night. That's the next game. After that, they will return. I think it's, is it Tuesday of next week? It's, it'll probably like be Tuesday. Uh, I'm yep. guessing it'll be Tuesday. So I'm still expecting the Bruins to win in five. I'm still hoping for that. It might be six. I don't think this goes seven games. I just don't. So, I mean, there's always that possibility. You split in New York. It's not the end of the world, but you got to take this, take care of business game five, six. Um, this is an important game tonight. It could be a series deciding victory here. So going up to one, that's a big advantage right there. Um, anything else on the Bruins front that we want to uh, address? No, but I got other stuff to talk to 
bring I up and uh, talk to Phil about the net about um, the Celtics and everything. I got I got other stuff to I got other stuff to bring up in the NHL in the yep. world of the NHL. Right, I'll go go with that next. Yep. Um. So Montreal ended up beating uh, Toronto yeah, after being down three one in the series. Um. So since 2010 in game sevens the canadians are now five and oh with three of those game sevens coming against the bruins yep and then the maple leafs are now zero and four in game sevens since 2010 um the curse the uh, the canadians also won the first game of their series last night against the jets um some uh, we, you know, they're still waiting to hear on the uh, consequences of the Mark Shifley hit last night. Um, with a minute left in the game, he absolutely knocked out uh, Sean Evans, I think his name is, from the Canadians, um, who was brought out on his, uh, taken out on a stretcher, but apparently he didn't have to go to the hospital, so... Obviously, he had a concussion, but he's going to be out a couple games or a few. Um, so, I mean, the Canadians are going to be tough, but the Jets are also tough. And the Avalanche are up 2-0 on the Golden Knights, and I believe the Lightning are also up 2 nothing on the Hurricanes. I believe that is correct. Um, I am surprised on the Vegas front. I don't think Vegas is going to get there. I don't. I, the I thought – they were going to be more physical um i thought they had the speed to keep up with uh colorado but so far through the two games not so much uh second game wasn't as dominant for colorado as the first game was first game they absolutely destroyed them uh winning seven to one last night they won in overtime so we'll see uh it's big as you do, you want Vegas and the Bruins for everything. Well, they're going back to Vegas now, so we'll see. This should be should be interesting. They got to bring their A game too, because we really haven't seen it that much. So hopefully, Vegas gets their stuff together. I am surprised. I have to tell you, with how severe some of these hits have been for some players already in the playoffs, is that a cause for concern across the NHL? Um. I will say that physical teams are more physical when it comes to the playoffs. Yep. Um, some overly physical than others, but yeah, I mean, last last night was pretty brutal. I'm surprised. I'm surprised he wasn't hospitalized with more I mean, injuries. If we look at Kevin Miller, a prime example. I mean, he got a big hit right there. Um, who got fined on the Bruins? Was it DeBrusque for a hit? High yep. stick of some sort? Yep. So, I mean, across the NHL, I mean, there's been some, some significant hits. Kadri, dirty. Kadri got suspended. I mean, Shifley yeah. last night, what, literally. What, is that really a surprise that Kadri was suspended? I mean, no, no. The guy's um, worse than Tom Wilson, I think. Yeah. I, I posted on Instagram a couple, uh, like a week ago, I think with a poll asking who, who was more hated in the NHL, Kadri or Wilson. But, yeah, I mean, Shifley's hit was pretty brutal last night. He went from goal line to goal line, full speed, just absolutely and They demolished. made that suspension out, right? We know that he's suspended. I don't think it's been made it public yet. Been announced. What do you I haven't think seen is anything. probably going to happen? He'll, I mean, he'll probably get seven, eight games. Yeah. I, was I don't think he's the first time. Five. I don't think he's a first-time offender, but, I mean, we'll yep. see. No, so, that's a big um, hit for Winnipeg too, because he's my one of the star players. The Bruins is just stay, stay healthy. Don't do anything stupid, because they're watching. And these refs too. That's another issue. I think the officiating is just flat out and terrible. Um, I think they have more uh, fresh blood for refs. Is that what it is? I, there, there aren't, there aren't as many. I still reps. hear, I still hear Sutherland's name. I still hear some of these other crooks who are just horrible officials. And so, I do know that the one of the refs in the Washington series, it was only his 
second or third playoffs yeah. that he's done. Um, so, I mean, the, I, I think part of it is because some of the veterans probably didn't want to risk with COVID and everything. Um, yeah, but, that could be it. And remember, too, that the border's still closed in Canada. And that's why yep. this whole thing is kind of very odd in this playoff structure with the Canadian team not being able to play really anybody in the U.S. And I did hear a little bit of rumblings today that the borders maybe end up getting opened, which is great news. And I think that they'll finally be able to have some sort of an action plan here on next steps. Well, I hope so, because it's only going to prolong things. With you How can know, you have a Stanley Cup with the way that you just can't? It's going to have an asterisk or something like that. So I'm glad that it looks like they're trending in the right direction. But residents but, in Canada are not too happy about it because hockey takes priority over the regulars. So that was their biggest beat today. Well, and, and they're going to be, I mean, those whichever team makes it out of that out of that series is going to be in trouble when they come here to play whichever team they play because – Correct. Correct. So we'll see. Um, I hope we can get Phil back in here so we can talk about the Celtics because I w- I'm just going to flat out tell you, I was blindsided yesterday with that news that came out. That was a blind side. And I mean, you kind of called blind. it though. I did kind of call it because I did say this team cannot have Brad Stevens any longer as their coach, but to take Brad Stevens and put him into the president of basketball ops at 44 years old. Oh, that is just awful. And let's also be honest here too. The reason that he is going into that position, it's more a force. It's more the Celtics are saying you signed this massive extension and you're on the hook now to be transitioned into this new job because we don't want to release you. So you're going to do something here for us. So Stevens, at least temporarily, until he finds maybe something more permanent, is in a role that I just don't foresee him in for very long. I'd love to hear, now Phil's back here joining us. Um, what do you, What is your takeaway, Phil? Well, I kind of got what I thought was going to possibly happen. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect it this quick. The baby says it all. You're just screaming. I'm sorry. Uh, that's that what I've been dealing up? with. Uh, no. Uh, no. Kemba tried to pick him up, but he heard his news. Uh, I think so that's Kendrick Harkins in the back, actually. Oh, I cannot. Well, he, that my, would be. After, after blocking him from Twitter yesterday. You blocked him? I, I can't take him anymore. I Why? He's a fraud. Fraud? He's a fraud. Oh, and you're a fool. Brady. They can go on another. <laughs> They can go on Celtic Island. You're so full of indignatious anger. Uh, Speaking of which, uh, all right. Anyway, hold on. I'm going to have to grab them and then go uh, stop video. One second. Uh, So, we'll, we'll, um, if Phil, um, Phil, you still there? I'm here. I just, okay. I'm going to go to Tom first. I know you're not the biggest NBA fan, neither am I. However, it's definitely worth talking about. What would, What's your overall feeling on the whole? Match? Yeah, Tom, tell us all about it. Tell us all about it. Put your put your green team hat on. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of surprised they uh, removed Danny Ainge uh, completely. Yeah. Um, not too surprised that they gave Stevens a promotion. Yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe, um, I mean, who knows? Maybe they did it just to see how he'd do, if he could do better than Ainge. And then, you know, if he doesn't do well, they just release him, see how he does for a year, and then say, see you later. You didn't do great. You still suck. <laughs> Eight million a season. Might as well get something on that money that you're giving out for him. Well, all right. Hold on. I got that. All right. Now I got to get him again. All right. So, yeah, pretty much it's the gentleman's firing all around. Like, it looks, it sounds like all of them, are like both Ainge and Brad, they were relieved of their command. Whether it's 100% true that Ainge wanted out or just wasn't feeling it, I don't know. But it seems like, uh, it actually what was it, uh, Jim Murray from 985 Sports Hub had a great take. And I actually had a similar take to it because when that stuff came out about when he was on Toucher and Rich, uh, D- Danny Ainge, 
not really responding that well to the uh, Kyrie question. Uh, the Celtics didn't really do anything. Or there wasn't really any like, you know, announcement about like, well, you know, or like retraction or he didn't do anything to kind of save face. So when, you know, <laughs> when they came back or when, you know, the weekend was over and you know, game five happened, it's kind of like, you know, they're both, he's out, he's out, he's going somewhere else and, or he just, he's not engaged. And, and Danny, for all the good he's done for the team, and I don't mean just the championship which I will still say, like, hey, that's not a bad move, but you also, you know, you had a lot of help from Kevin McHale making that move. And also, maybe you don't make that move if uh, Ainge is there because it's his old buddy in Minnesota. Um, but, you know, uh, Ainge didn't get them helped last year when they uh, another piece could have helped them possibly get to the NBA Finals, maybe even being competitive enough to win it. Didn't really help them out this year that much uh, going into the season or uh, at the trade deadline or before. I mean, and also, you know what? He, he just didn't handle the whole, I know there's nothing to do about the Kyrie thing. I don't know. That's just a whole, that whole thing is just a, a unicorn situation. It's just bizarre. But I, and I'm glad, you know, I, we'll see how Brad does. And I think Tom has a good look into it. We'll see how he does in a year. And if it's horrible, then you cut him loose. But overall... So my, my thing here with the, the whole transition with everything with Danny Ainge, apparently what put Danny Ainge over the top with this so-called decision with ownership and this kumbaya that they had, had to do with what happened for game four. And that was when Kyrie returned. Oh, the stomp? And Kyrie stomped on Lucky, and then the fan threw the water bottle at Kyrie at the end of the game. Apparently, Danny Ainge went into the locker room. Oh, that, that article was false. It was false. Yeah, it was, it was false. But it sounded great. Oh, interesting. That would have been yeah. fun if he did do that. We'll go, we'll I, go on. I do Sorry. want to just say, what is wrong with these players that they think that that's, that's okay what Kyrie did? That's okay. They take no accountability. They don't speak up about it. They worship the ground that Kyrie wants to walk on, that flat earth. And pretend like they're all buddy buddy with him well if that were see? kevin garnett if that were paul pierce if that was cedric maxwell if that were tommy heinson Kyrie would not have been able to breathe in that garden so shame on the leadership there for the south outside of jalen brown he did come out and he did make a statement about it but all the rest of them oh no Kyrie's our buddy let's go hold hands in the park did you see what uh, Garnett and uh, Glenn Davis said? I sure did. Uh, yeah, I don't honestly like the whole the league is different in a lot of ways. Some of that is good, some of that is boring, <laughs> uh, frankly. And just I don't know. I as a player, as someone who watches the game, has watched the game for a while. Part of the thing you do, even with Kyrie not doing that, like not is something. But when like Harden goes to the basket freely. Like, why isn't there someone just at least once or twice be like, yeah, you're going to get knocked down. You're not going to get a free pass. Like, I don't understand that. Like, and maybe that's me thinking old school, but I mean, there's nothing wrong. And it happens all that. Uh, it happens more than you think. I know he's, he's hating it too, <laughs> but no, I, I just sometimes, and with Kyrie, I, I know that's translated. Why didn't someone put Kyrie's ass on the ground? Mm. But uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not a violent man by nature, but. I don't know that it just him Kyrie and but that's who he is sure but also just like I just uh, yeah put him on his b backside man because he was just I, I mean don't know. think it, about think about what happened with uh, Juju Smith Schuster and the Bengals logo sure sure it's almost the same exact thing uh and it's all gonna remember with the Patriots remember when JJ Watts spit in Pat Patriot oh did he Oh yeah, that oh, just yeah. sounds kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Back in the day, I don't. I think him and Gronk. Uh, I think Gronk took care of business on that. Threw him out of the club. But that also, uh, sorry, not to harp. But football is like it's different. Football is very different. Different mentality. Yeah. Different mentality, and also like all you do is yeah. Hit. But we've seen. We've seen basketball players put up a fight before about stuff like this, if, yeah. if not more stupid stuff. 
But I think a lot of this has to do with the player driven league. Because the players rule the, rule the nest, whatever they say goes sometimes. So you have to be buddy buddy with LeBron. You got to be buddy buddy with KD. You got to be buddy buddy with Kyrie and all the rest of these imbeciles. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of the NBA. I don't even know if it's that. I know what you're saying. I don't even know if it's like they have to be buddy buddy with them. I just think they're more. They're afraid they're to less... make a chance, I think, and be, be different. I don't even think that's like it. Just go along with the flow of things for these big name people. I mean, I don't even know if that's it, honestly. I mean, I, I think don't it's think more there's or less... that many people that would go out and want to challenge a LeBron or challenge. Oh, or oh I mean, uh, uh, Brett, uh, uh, Damian Lillard is a guy who challenged the Brooklyn Nets as an organization, and all the people there uh, just say, I think it was like a couple weeks before. Um, or I think when they got Blake Griffin, I think I forget. He's like, yeah, they're just buying a championship, like it, with the, a lot of derision. He said it with so. No, but the, listen, I think it's more. Someone said if they're independent contractors, uh, they're more less akin to think of a team attitude, uh, or less the, the, the their allegiance to the team as opposed to the player, uh, which is understandable. But so it's not that it's not what we grew up with. We grew up with more like that, serv- uh, that kind of like uh, that pledge to the team or like a servitude, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, man, I just wanted someone like, I just want a team together that kind of focus and has one goal yep. uh, to win a championship. And this team definitely didn't. It clearly didn't. And I think that like, and the fact that they made it this, well, I mean, they underachieved greatly, but the fact that they got a game out of it, it was fun, but also just like, Ugh, it's just such a, it's like a, it's just a wet fart. <laughs> just this whole thing. Smelly wet. Um, who's going to be the new coach next year? That's my next question. Here. Who's on coach the Coach K. Yeah, right. Um, Phil, who's your choice? Uh, I'd love uh, Chauncey Billups. I'm a, uh, he and, you know, fun factoid. He was a Celtics for about six, for like three or four months. Yes, he was. <laughs> and he was. was that? Oh, I think it was maybe like 98, maybe, or 97, 98, or maybe 99, 98, 99, I think. He was like, he was a couple of years before Paul Pierce. Or he was like the, the first Patino draft, I think. And he was like their first, they had like two first rounders. He was one of them. Uh, and yeah, they traded him. He went, I think, I don't know if he went to, Pistons right away but yeah that was that was kind of a and they traded a mid-year it was really weird but no I'd, I'd like to have him he's 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 won one and he's I don't like him he just seems like he has the chutzpah as the Hebrew crew would say my my pick is Chauncey Billups as well Phil I'm going to agree totally with you 100% um I just think he's the best fit. I think they need somebody who has been in the league, who's been there, done that, and is some somebody that has the players backing behind, uh, you know, a transition from him. I unfortunately have to wrap it up right now. I would love to talk more, but I have a little situation happening here at the store that I have to go clean up. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, Uh-oh. Boy, story of my life right now. Welcome you to my world. Child, you have your child, Phil. <laughs> I have my... Baby you got your baby. Time. You have your baby. He is not feeling well today. So, so right. I have to uh, go take care of that. We will see you next time here on another episode of Face Facts. Hopefully a lot less uh, chaotic. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. All right.